doing towards the end of the day here, so thanks for showing up. Um, so my name is, uh, I'll, I'll talk about myself before I, I go right into this, but so my name is Andrea Gallego. I'm a chief technology officer at the Boston Consulting Group, and within that group, I, um, I work for Gamma, which is our analytics uh, and artificial intelligence unit. Uh, prior to BCG, I was at McKinsey and a couple of other consulting firms, and I have a background in economics and engineering, which is why you'll see the crux of my talk is the intersection of those two disciplines and a few others. So we're going to talk about something that I coined called symbiotic evolution and building socially acceptable AI. And the reason why this is important at GitHub and why we're here today talking about this is because you will see towards the end of my talk that I think the over 50 million developers at GitHub and that use GitHub have the opportunity to either make a place for ethical AI or just let it go and, and have us continue to evolve as we are. And we'll see what that means. All right, so we're going to talk about humans and machines. So humans are irrational and machines are rational. Humans are clumsy, and machines are exact. Humans are thoughtful, and machines are calculated. Humans are original, and machines are repetitive. But humans and machines are both biased. So something's wrong there, right? You would think that the other side would say, machines are not biased. But as we all know, we inevitably as human beings are biased in everything we do, in every walk we take, every thought we make, we are built and bred by our social construct, by our culture, by our society, and by our anthropology. And so waking up tomorrow morning and say, we're going to build unbiased AI is simply not what, in my opinion, I believe is the right answer. We've sung this song before. We used to have currency as paper, and we introduced credit. And we said, oh, amazing. We're now going to offer the world credit. It's going to be amazing. And part of it was we went from people living in rural areas to living in urban areas. We went from people making smaller incomes to making more incomes. We sped up the economy. But as we know, Credit has also harmed us in numerous ways. And it continues to do so today. Let's see if I can get my... Uh, so here's an article from Vice, 2019, about now how algorithms are making credit more biased. There are about six other articles like this on how the credit system is still fraught with bias. But wait, we have AI, right? And it's a machine that's calculated. So why is it creating bias? Because it's using data from history that is biased. Give me a second here. All right. So we are building AI that reinforces a world we live in today, not the world we want tomorrow. So we all know, I won't go into politics, it's a heated topic, but the world we are in today is not exactly a world we want our, our children and our, our grandchildren to live in, and we are still evolving as a society. Right? But we kind of know what we want to do. We kind of know how we want to evolve society. But we need to symbiotically build our machines as we evolve. We're not going to wake up tomorrow and have zero bias. But we are building our machines to do so. So the question I asked the group in the room is, if a machine was completely rational tomorrow and had to live in a world with billions of irrational humans, what would happen? Maybe. But I don't want to be that gloom and doom. Autonomous AI doesn't understand humanity. 
We can talk about Tesla and we can talk about cars and, and all that sort of stuff, right? But we all know that this is simply the case. Uh, the machines simply don't understand how we, how we react to things. But there's a positive to this. As engineers and as developers, we have a kind of, we, we need to do this, right? So we need to talk to economists, we need to talk to anthropologists, and we need to understand how what we are building impacts the way we think, the way we work, the way we act, the way we react, and how the data we're putting into all of our systems and into all of our code is representative of society today. Now, some people will tell you, remove all the bias from the data. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying understand how the bias you're bringing into that data is affecting the system you're building and how much you might need to pull that back little by little and start using the engineering and the wonderful products we are building to educate a better society and not force it into submission. So your role as creators is to slowly and progressively build systems that understand us as humans and don't fight with us. We can't fight it overnight, right? And the thing I like to use here, it made me, I was thinking about this the other day, is the Constitution, right? The Constitution was created hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But when they wrote it, they said, well, we're not going to be around for long. And we kind of want this thing to survive for like, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, maybe thousands of years. So how do we build something that goes way beyond something we could ever think of, but in a way that makes it flexible for five years from now for it to work, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. I have yet to see a thought process like this. I've seen a lot of people say, everything is unbiased, everything is biased, remove AI, AI is in danger, AI is not good, AI is great, the world's gonna, you know, no more jobs, all the jobs, I mean, all sorts of weird, you know, ext extremes. And what I'm asking for is to find a happy middle because what will eventually happen, which is what happens with a lot of technologies, is people get a bit of a nausea to the buzzword, right? 10 years from now, AI is going to be, uh, I mean, what was it? Was it great? Was it not great? Caused a bit of a mess. Um, look at credit, right? So I think we have a real opportunity. We're at an incredible inflection point right now going into a new decade where we can really start to think about how we as an entire society and community come together and build thoughtful, true artificial intelligence applications, not what people think is artificial intelligence, um, and, uh, and come as a community together. So I'm leaving some room open for Q&A, um, but what I, I want to leave you guys with is there are over 50 million pe people right, writing code. And those are the ones we know at GitHub. This is something we think very carefully of at BCG. Join us in fighting the AI status quo, right? Don't follow the, the, the streams of, of folks that are out there, but really take a deep, deep thought into what it is that we're building and how we are going to live with it in a society slowly and progressively and evolve that way and not just try to change everything overnight. So I'll open it up for Q&A and leave there. No one, it's a hot topic, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. So if there are 50 million developers that are against corporations that have infinity amount of resources, how, how do you imagine we are going to compete against these companies? That's an excellent question. So I'm, I'm in a corporation, right? There are developers in the room here that belong to the, to the same corporation. At the end of the day, if we don't do this the right way, those corporations are going to lose a ton of money. Simple fact, right? Uh, they're going to make a ton of bad decisions. Right? So uh, if you think about an automotive company, right? if an automotive company does not understand what autonomous AI is going to do or how it's going to disrupt their space in a very thoughtful way, they're going to lose a ton of money. So you're, you're right. Um, and they're, 
Actually, I'll take a step back. They're also in a lot of legal risks. So I don't know if you guys saw the United Healthcare story. Who's seen that one yet? Yeah, okay. So they just got, they're getting heavily, heavily sued for bias in an algorithm, right? So um, now whose fault really was it? Was it the engineer's fault writing the algorithm? Who knows, right? But the idea, that's why I think we're at a point where people will listen. Because this is stuff that sea levels are, are curious about afraid about, right, what is this going to do fundamentally to their business? So I think there's a moment right now where people will actually listen to the technical community. Yeah. Hey, uh, I actually part of the United Health Group Corporation, so I know what you're talking about. Uh, my question to you is, is there some sort of a manifesto kind of mentality that we need to go through as a collective to have this, to, to basically push the regulations and laws. Everybody knows it, right? It's out in the open that DBR laws are not at all um, you know, up to ready. date with the ready, yeah, exactly, with the technology. But what kind of manifesto could a community create that is working day and night with the AIs and the machine learning stuff, uh, along with pushing this change, which is super, super impactful? to the end customer in, in, in everyday life. Yeah. So you, do you guys all know about the OpenAI initiative, right? It's good. It's not a manifesto. I think you are spot on. There is, I mean, I think you, you talk to Microsoft, right, that now owns GitHub, right? You talk to Amazon. I think they're looking for, this isn't an easy manifesto to write, right? This is what I mean. I think, yes, it has to be the community, but it cannot be a community of just engineers, right? Economists know this inside and out. They know exactly what caused the market crash, right? They know what impact credit has. They know what impacts everything else in the world. Anthropologists understand how we communicate with each other and how we, why putting a laptop in front of us changes the way we, we interact as humans, right? So I do think we have to write a manifesto. I do think we need to do it soon. I do think we have to do it as a collective. I'm going to try to spur some interest, right? Um, I think I need help from a lot of other people. Uh, I, I struggle to find another way where we're five years from now and have a, I mean, have a bunch of algorithms just making decisions that we assume are, are better decisions. We can't backtrack and that sort of scenario. But uh, yeah, so long story short, I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, think about it. Think long and hard about the stuff that you're coding and, 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 how, it, and how the world is changing. And, uh, and hopefully, you'll see me tweeting and Instagramming and all that jazz. So hopefully, you'll, you'll join up with the effort. Thank you very much, everyone.